I I'd really want to drill down again about the whole idea of, you know, you, you bring so much to the table from not just a, you know, business training and, and leadership development and things like that, but also, you know, you are an entrepreneur yourself. So what is, what are the, are the key traits? And as, you know, as we're kind of leaning into the, the, the whole area of this, this interview that I love called the rising tide micro course, but if you can kind of drill down on that about, you know, what does it take to, you know, what, what does success look like? Uh, frame that however you want to, but I think our listeners are really curious about, you know, what are the key steps, the key, you know, elements that, that have to be in place for, for you to be successful? Right. Yeah. So brilliant. And I love that you do this. I think um, this is something that I feel like mo I wish other people did in their, in their interview process. Um, so where to start? Uh, I have going back to sort of the, the, the story and the experience that we were talking about earlier, I have worked for entrepreneurs and business owners. I have been a manager of, of businesses. And then again, I've, I've, built my own business. Mm -hmm. And I think I've learned being in, in those different roles, I've, I've learned, I would say three things that are essential for anybody's success at, at any level, right? Like whether you're somebody helping somebody grow a business, right? Or whether you're somebody who is actually growing your own business. And I would say the first thing that is absolutely fundamental and goes back to the, to our conversation just now about leadership is that leadership begins with understanding yourself, right? To be a strong leader, it begins with self, strong self-leadership, and strong self-leadership ultimately comes down to a high level of self-awareness and a high level of emotional intelligence. The only way that you, we, I think if you were to ask anybody, you know, like how high would you say your emotional intelligence is? I think we would all rate ourselves high, right? In other words, I don't think most of us, if asked that question, would say, yeah, I'm pretty low on the emotional intelligence level. I think we like to think of ourselves as being emotionally intelligent. Um, but when you step into a leadership role and the thing about leadership and, you know, to, 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 to refine even the difference between management and leadership, right? Is that management is, is a title, leadership is, is a behavior, right? Leadership is something that you take on, you embody leadership. Anybody can be a leader. Um, doesn't matter what your title or your position is or your relationship to anybody else, right? Leadership is just something you choose to live into and that you choose to embody. But when you have the higher level of responsibility that you have within either an organization or even again, as you're growing your own business, as your level of responsibility increases, your leadership, the, the need for leadership grows. And if you have not, if you've stepped into a, a role of responsibility where that has not forced you to cultivate strong leadership skills, you are going to be forced to see yourself. Leadership reveals far more about the leader than it does about the oh, people that sure. they're leading. Absolutely. And I would say that was the hardest lesson that I had to learn because when I first got into management, um, I thought, I, I honestly did think the problem was my team. I was like, what's wrong with these guys? Well, why can't they show up the way I show up? Right. And it was like, oh, the reason they're not showing up the way I show up is because they're their own people. They're, they, they think differently. They feel differently. They know different things, you know? So I had to figure out how to show up best for them and, and how to stop thinking about it as what they can do for me. Right. And so I really had to go inward. So again, I would say the first thing is recognizing that leadership is going to reveal to you who you really are mm -hmm. and all the areas that you have, have to grow in within yourself. And I would say, start taking down the list of the areas that you find you're struggling in the most, even in, in the areas that you feel like you're being tested the most by other people. Um, the tendency that you, that anybody might feel to, to say, Oh, this person is doing this thing and it's not what I want them to do. Take note of that and say, how can I take ownership? ownership of that, right? And start seeking out resources to help you, um, again, elevate your leadership skill, elevate your, your level of self-awareness, um, identify what your triggers are, like the things that make you angry, the things that make you want to fly off the handle, um, the things that make you sensitive, right? Like um, knowing what those things are and then seeking healing around those things, or again, a profound sense of understanding of what's causing the root of what's causing those things. So um, I always uh, support anybody who goes to therapy. I myself have you know, done plenty of, of work in therapy and, um, it has only led to me showing up better for others. So again, all of that is, is incredibly crucial. Say number two, if you're going to be successful in building a business, um, or again, leading somebody else's business, you have to have a plan for what that success is going to look like. 
right? If you want to scale anything, whether it's zero to one or whether it's one to a hundred, you have to know what that scale is going to look like, right? And then from there, you have to be flexible. So have a plan that is going to serve as the foundation, um, the guiding, you know, I would say it's the guidepost. It's the compass by which you decide that you're going to take action and move forward in. Um, and then understand that, that you're always, there's always going to be things that you don't know. And so as a result, you're going to have to recalibrate a lot, you know, now Navigating a business and growing, scaling a business is all about being able to uh, adapt and attack, right? And to recalibrate when things don't work out according to the initial plan. But then again, reformat the plan and then move forward. So I think I see so many people that are that are like, "Yep, we're going to grow a business, and we're just we're going to we're going to do this." And it's like, okay, but how how are you going to go about doing that? And what does success look like? Right? You want to see success. You want the business to grow. You want to you know you want to have a, a six figure business. Okay. Well, let's break down. Like, what do you have to do? You know, there was a great quote in uh, Think and Grow Rich. I'm sure you're familiar with that book. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's it's the, if you the matter the amount of success that you want to achieve in life is um, is comparable to the amount that you're willing to give in order to achieve that success, right? So you have to ask yourself, what am I willing to give in exchange for the success that I want to have, right? And then create a plan around that. Super important. Um, the the last thing, the third thing, um, and I, I want to highlight this because sales, you know, everybody has like, they either love sales or they hate sales. <laughs> and I think for anybody, again, whether you're helping someone else grow a business or whether you are a business owner um, or an entrepreneur seeking to develop your own business, um, you've got to get comfortable with sales. And I think we, we tend to feel for people who feel uncomfortable around sales, it's usually because they're just focusing on, they, they understand sales to be about money. Um, they think that sales is about, it's a, it's an exchange, you know, I give you this, they give me that, you know, and I, there's something about that exchange that feels uncomfortable. Um, a lot of times that comes around not fully understanding either your own worth, um, or understanding the true value of the thing that you're, that you're giving, right. That you're, that you're the product that you have or the service that you have, you don't fully understand or intimately know or believe in the value of the very thing that you're trying to get people to pay for, you're going to have a hard time convince people to pay for it. Okay. So first thing is you got to know your value. You got to know the value of the product and service, and you've got to believe in that and um, be very comfortable talking about that. But most importantly, right, once you get all that other stuff out of the way, the most important thing is that sales is about connecting with people. Mm -hmm. It's not about making money, right? If the money is the, is the benefit, right? The money is like the, uh, it's the outcome of a of a connection and if you have a strong connection that has that has again been built on the foundation of the value that has um been based on a matter of caring and trusting and wanting to serve at a high level um and that ultimately delivers on that value right that's if that value is evident to the other person and it's a right fit that's when the sale happens, right? But that everything in between there is all about connection. And again, it's about trusting. It's about knowing. It's about um, rapport building. You know, it's about strong communication and it's about your heart being in the right place. So if you want to elevate your sales, get your heart right, right? And understand, understand what your product is, understand what the needs of your client are, and really understand nobody should know the needs of your client better than you and then have a conversation that is is heart centered and that really seeks to help them get what they want and that is the key to sales and i would say of those those are the three things wow what a what a great synopsis i mean i as you were you were talking i'm thinking how do i make these in, in cute little bullet points and i i mean it's <laughs> know yourself know your plan and know your value i mean Ooh, i a, like that what a what a great uh, you know three keys to be three essentials to, to be successful in really anything that, that you, you have in mind, primarily in, in starting a business. But thank you for sharing that and just, you know, kind of boiling that down and really wrapping up well today.